Tonight, the Pentagon refuses to take responsibility for a grave injustice exposed by WUSA 9. The Pentagon not taking responsibility for that at all. Military brass, no apology for the family of a fallen and forgotten World War II hero. You see, they had no idea their relative was buried near garbage and pig pens halfway around the world on the remote Pacific island of Tarawa. Here's Mike Valerio with the latest in our series, Fallen and Forgotten. The dead had done their job and they're in the ground somewhere and they just forgot about them. The price we have to pay for a war we didn't want. It's the most painful and disturbing sight on Tarawa. American skeletons abandoned, feet from third world slums and pig pens. It's a distant Pacific island where more than 400 Americans are still missing from World War II. And it's where we spent five days this summer, documenting the work of private Americans who unearthed the fallen. They found the remains of Navy Corpsman Howard Brisbane back in 2015. And in June, we met his family when he was reburied at Arlington National Cemetery. But Howard's family had no idea this is where he was found. The government never told them that old white crosses are gone. They heard the truth from us. People that need to know about this because 73 years ago, we were in a real fight and now they still there. We left these guys behind. The Marines, we left Marines behind. It's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. To see this. We did not know, we did not know. It's unbelievable. Our mission now is to change Pentagon policy, change the status quo so that families know where their loved ones were really buried. This summer, the colonel in charge of the Pentagon's efforts couldn't give us an answer why Howard's family didn't know the truth. Um, no reaction. The the only thing I have to say to that is where we have found um, remains, again, in many cases, 70 plus years later, a lot has happened. Remember that answer? That's Colonel Fern Sumter Winbush, and now she's no longer in charge. As of this fall, the operation is in the hands of Major General Kelly McKegg, a retired two-star general with a widely respected reputation. We asked what changes he wants to make, but the Pentagon denied us an in-person interview, a request we've made for a month now. Instead, a written response from the general. Change we are determined to make is to constantly seek methods to improve proactive communications with the families of the missing. But wouldn't that mean actually communicating better with the families here? Well, there is no word on any changes. To defend how they handled this situation, a spokesperson for DPAA, the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency said, quote, DPAA did not know where Brisbane's remains were buried. Thus, there was no information to provide the family. But these documents suggest otherwise. This is a 98 page report prepared by History Flight, the nonprofit that employs all of the anthropologists on Tarawa. This report meticulously details where Brisbane was found, with images of a parking lot paved on top of his grave. History Flight sent this report to the Pentagon, not yesterday, but in 2015. And yet there was no telling his family any of this. I thought they found it in a mark grave that said Brisbane. So until you're telling me what they have done, I did not realize the real, the amount of real work, did you, that went into this? Nobody said anything about a parking lot until you said it. DPAA now seems to be playing the blame game, specifically blaming the messenger, the people who are known as service casualty officers. They're the ones who visit families and tell them when bones are matched with DNA. Quote, service casualty officers for the respective branches of the military are responsible for providing information to family members about their relatives. But where does that information come from? It all comes from DPAA. It's a blame game with real consequences, a breakdown that left Howard Brisbane's family disillusioned with our own military. They bring it home guys that have forgotten. And I don't know how many times I can say that without getting emotional, but it's just wrong. But while Pentagon progress is slow or non-existent on this front, 
It's rapid on Tarawa. Teams discovered two Marines in two days when we were there, and they didn't stop when they ran into any kind of roadblock. So the plan is to move the excavation site farther and farther to the west, foot by foot across this road. And that's because the team here thinks that there are U.S. Marines who are buried under the road and into the neighborhood to my right. That could mean removing some of these homes in order to find these Marines who were buried here 73 years ago. For now, the work continues, while the whole story of what it's really like on Tarawa may remain hidden from the families of the fallen. And tonight, our reporting also confirms that these recovery missions are not given priority here, even though close to 73,000 Americans are still missing from World War II to this day. That'll be part of our investigation coming up next year. Adam. One of the biggest takeaways for me is you mentioned the blame game. We can yeah. point fingers at the Pentagon. Ultimately, somebody paved over what they knew was a grave site. Right that back then. Well, I mean, but it's nobody's fault who is alive today. And I mean, we recognize that we recognize that the Pentagon recognizes that as well. But what would make this better, what would right this wrong is if the Pentagon was truthful, admitted that the island is like this is like this setting and then told these families about that. And they're not doing that because it's a national disgrace. If the Pentagon only told the truth, there would be no issue here. Nobody faults anybody alive today for what happened in 1943. They just need to be truthful and they're not. We need transparency and you've done a great job at this point holding them accountable. Mike, thank you. You bet.